Hey Titans, hello and welcome to Chapter 7, Section 2, The Substitution Method. Our goal for today is to be able to find an exact solution to a system of linear equations by using the substitution method. Here in Chapter 7, we're going to be focusing on three different methods to solve a system of equations. The first method was the graphing method, which we studied yesterday. Today's focus is the second method, the substitution method. Let's go ahead and take a look at our two glossary terms for today's lesson. The first glossary term is the substitution method. The substitution method is an algebraic method of solving a system of equations that leads to an exact answer. Now the question often comes up, well why do we need a second method? I'm really good at graphing, why can't I just use the graphing method? Well, the graphing method is not as exact as the substitution method. In the graphing method, if it does not come out to be an exact coordinate, it is sometimes difficult to have an exact answer. The substitution method gives us an algebraic way to find that exact answer. Also, oftentimes when using the graphing method, it can be difficult if we're dealing with a solution in which the ordered pair is a large number. If the ordered pair solution is a large number, that means we're going to have a large graph. So the substitution method is a useful alternative to avoid making such a big graph. Our second definition for today is the word substitution. Substitution means replacing a variable in one equation with an expression that equals that variable given from another equation. Those are our two definitions for today. Let's go ahead and dive into the steps that are going to be needed for solving a system by the substitution method. Now these steps at first may look complicated, they may look intimidating, but after we do a couple example problems I really think you'll understand these steps and be able to put them uh, into use in a, in a pretty easy manner. Let's go ahead and go through the steps. Step 1, solve for either x or y in one of the equations. Sometimes this is already done for you. In other words, to rephrase step number one, we always tell students to isolate a variable. It doesn't matter in which equation, it doesn't matter if it's x or y, but the first step is to isolate one variable in one of the equations. Step two then calls for us to substitute the expression that x or y equals into the second equation for the corresponding variable. In other words, Take that variable that's isolated and substitute what it equals into the other equation. That will leave you with a multi-step equation. And step three is to solve that multi-step equation. After solving the multi-step equation, you're going to have one of your ordered pair values. That leads you to step four, which is to substitute the solution into the first equation. You then solve that equation to find the value of the other variable in step number 5. After completing step 4 and step 5, that's going to leave you with an ordered pair solution. So step 6 is to go ahead and write that solution as an ordered pair. Step 7 is then to go ahead and take that ordered pair solution and check it by plugging it back into both equations. If it works for both equations, then your ordered pair is correct. If you follow these steps in order, you should find the correct ordered pair for your system of equations. It's probably a good idea at this time to pause the video so you can make sure you have these steps down in your notes. As you go through problems, you're going to want to go step by step. And then, as we do more and more problems, these steps are going to become natural to you and you won't need to keep referring back to the steps. Alright students, now that we have described the substitution method steps, let's go ahead and put those steps into action with an example. The first example we want to go ahead and talk about here is the example of x plus y equals 7 for our first equation and x plus 2y equals negative 1 for our second equation. We're going to go ahead and find the exact solution to this system of equations by using the substitution method. So the first step of the substitution method is to go ahead and take one of your equations and isolate one of the variables. I'm going to go ahead 
and choose the first equation. I'm going to go ahead and take that first equation and I'm going to isolate one of the variables. Now it doesn't matter if I isolate x or if I isolate y. The op I mean the, the, the choice there is totally up to you. In this case I'm going to go ahead and choose to isolate x. So to get x by itself I'm going to go ahead and take that plus y and move it over. When it changes sides it changes signs. So now I have the equation x equals negative y plus 7. That leads me to step 2. Step 2 is then to go ahead and take what I know and plug it into the other equation. So I know that x equals negative y plus 7. So I'm going to take that value for x and plug it into the other equation. So in step 1 I used this top equation. So in step 2 I'm going to use the bottom equation here. So I'm going to take what I know x equals and I'm going to plug it into the other equation for x. And as you can see it's color coded there. The negative y plus 7 is going to go in for x. So x is out. Negative y plus 7 is in. Now as you can see that leaves me with an equation that I can go ahead and solve. So to solve this equation you got to think back to your multi-step equation solving skills from back uh, in chapter 3. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and combine like terms. I have negative y and I have positive 2y. So I'm going to go ahead and combine those. When I go ahead and combine those like terms I'm left with just simply y. So to solve the equation 7 plus y equals negative 1 I would go ahead and subtract 7 from each side and I'm left with an answer of y equals negative 8. After you know the value of one of the variables, you go ahead and take that value and you, you plug it back in to the equation that you used in step number one. In step number one, we used the equation x equals negative y plus 7. Now we just solved and found that y was negative 8. So we plug in negative 8. So now we know that x is going to equal negative, negative 8 plus 7. Negative, negative 8 is the same as a positive 8, and 8 plus 7 equals 15. So x equals 15. So I have my ordered pair, 15, negative 8. All right, let's go ahead and try another example. So example number two here, we have the system 15x minus 5y equals 30, and y equals 2x plus 3. Once again, to solve a system of equations means to find the ordered pair that's a solution to both. So to use the substitution method, I'm going to go ahead and do step one. Step one is to choose one of the equations and isolate one of the variables. Well, I don't even have to do anything for that. I already have a variable isolated and that's y equals 2x plus 3. Now that I have the variable isolated, I go ahead and take what I know that variable equals and plug it into the other equation. So my other equation is going to be 15x minus 5, and then I'm going to take y out and put in what I know y equals. I know y equals 2x plus 3. And then that is equal to 30. I then go ahead and solve that multi-step equation by distributing. So I'm going to have 15x minus 10x minus 15 equals 30. And once again, to solve that multi-step equation, I just simply took the negative 5 and distributed it. Now my next step in solving a multi-step equation, if you think back to chapter 3, is to combine like terms. So 15x minus 10x is 5x. So I have 5x minus 15 equals 30. I then add 15 to both sides, so I have 5x equals 45. I then divide by 5, and my final answer for my x variable is x equals 9. Now, I have half of my solution. To find the other half, I go back and take that 9 and plug it into the equation that I used for step number 1. 
So I'm going to do this work over here to the left side. y equals 2x plus 3. I now know that x is 9, so y equals 2 times 9 plus 3. What is 2 times 9? 18, and 18 plus 3 is 21. So I know that y equals 21. So now that I know x, and now that I know y, I have my ordered pair solution to the system. All right, this concludes uh, Lesson 7.2, Part 1. Uh, tomorrow we're going to go ahead and address special cases and application problems with the substitution method. So we will be spending one more class day um, on the substitution method. Um, what I would recommend you do right now is go ahead and use your textbook, and there's an additional example in your textbook. Go ahead and try number 5 on page 329. Uh, this will give you practice over this lesson that we just covered. So try number 5 on page 329. Uh, the solution to number 5 is negative 18 for x and negative 28 for y. So go ahead and solve that problem in the book and see if you can come out with that solution. Also, uh, if you would go ahead and please remember to sign the Google form uh, below this video on our class website and answer the question that's attached. Made with DoodleCast Pro.